Hello friends and welcome to the F-18 Hornet that's just had an update from Eagle Dynamics to allow for ground targeting using the radar. So that's what we're going to give a go today. I feel a bit weird trying to talk into the camera with my track IR hat on, but it is what it is. So I am over the uh, Egypt map and I just have four Mark 84 slicks. Nothing strange about those. We do have a TGP pot attached. We're not going to use it. We're going to get right on with this targeting. And so what I'm going to do is come into my air-to-ground mode uh, on the left-hand side. Select the Mark 84s. We're going to use the automatic mode because, of course, that's what we're testing. The targeting abilities. So we'll see how that works. And main fuse will set to nose. So the first thing that I've noticed here is... As is standard with the F-18, uh, the air-to-ground radar is is a useless mess at the best of times. Uh, so if we fill with the brightness a little bit and contrast, I found the contrast wheel actually works back to front. Uh, I've noticed this since forever. So as you turn it down and then turn up the brightness, you actually get more contrast. And as you can see there, the picture becomes slightly more detailed uh, the more you go until it's uh, beyond the extreme there. So that right there would be my first advice. Contrast down, brightness up. Of course, you're going to have to remember you've done that if you're then uh, performing multi-roll and uh, using the rest of the aircraft. So there is that. Let's come over onto the map view then. All I'll say is I've got a static target, a building, as well as a moving target. So we're going to try both. The building is near to a waypoint 2. So I created a waypoint 2 on flat desert. Near there are a couple of buildings that I've artificially placed down. I'm going to try use the radar to find it. And that's the only way we're not going to refine the target in any way, shape or form. So if I select my waypoints over here. And waypoint 3 I believe it is. There it is. Right round near that uh, waypoint over there is the target so swinging over and we'll go over the controls as we do this but for now it's just normal flying you see what we've done we're going to use the tdc controls and the tdc designate as well as the controls to choose which screen so let's just go over those real quick uh, so we're going to use the what the f18 called the sensor control switch left and right to switch between are we using the left screen or the right screen. It's not just that we need this to choose which screen are we using. There's a secondary reason why you need to use those controls as well. So this isn't an option. Make sure you bind those or if you can't, make sure you remember the keyboard. And then of course you've got your TDC, yeah, your throttle designator. Up, down, left, right and of course uh, throttle designator depressed which is, you know, your lock this thing up button okay and of course um if you need to unlock for any reason it's your nose wheel steering switch okay let's continue as i try and talk over the top of the wheelie bin lorry that's going by happy uh 2024 by the way for those of you and it will yeah this will have been my first video of the year i realize there were so many last year couldn't be helped unfortunately okay so here we are we're about i'm gonna slow speed right down actually to give myself a little bit more time i find i realize sometimes or a lot of times people use live pause in tutorial don't get me wrong to explain things live pause is so important but when you're trying to show something using live pause to try and show something it's like well if you're needing to use it to show something can you really use it in the heat of the moment? So certainly for explaining things. So I'm going to zoom in on my map view a little bit and I'm going to tighten up the angle to a 45 degree search pattern. And I'm just looking to get something vaguely in there. It is near the airport, the Cairo International Airport. So that will be a landmark. I'm now going to drop it down to 10. And this, for me, is almost useless. Like, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking I've placed down big buildings in the desert. 
I can see down here this mess up until about five miles looks to be, you know, densely populated city. Over there, I'm guessing, is desert where, you know, this, this uh, very contrasty pattern seems to reduce somewhat. There appears to be some sort of a road going over here. Potentially, these uh, darker grey areas are the runway. But it's a lot of guesswork, man. It's going to be almost impossible to find a target unless you happen to know where it is. So what I'm going to do now is take a lucky guess. Again, I did place the building down. And I'm almost sure it's one of these lighter areas here. This is where you need, and I am going to go live pause to, uh, to demonstrate this. This is where you need your sensor select switch. So what I'm going to do is sensor select the right screen. And that enables me now to use my TDC, you know, your throttle target controller, with this yellow area. And I'm just going to highlight an area that I'm interested in. We see this road snaking through, and it could well be uh, this lighter area here. So I'm going to depress there, and I've potentially got a target there now. But before I am commit, I'm going to hit the expand button here and take a closer look. Now you can see we've got a problem here already with the contrast is now working against me. I can certainly see the airport down here and of course the, the, the you know, the, the, the segment of the radar directly in front of the aircraft is blind. So what I'm going to have to do is unpause and we're going to swing the aircraft to the left somewhat. We're going to get the auto throttle on just so we don't get too slow. And I think right there will be good. Let's get uh, all the active pause on again. And there we see definitely is something there. And again, it was almost impossible to see using the normal radar. Definitely say in terms of just searching, the F-16 radar is loads better looking for ground targets than the F-18. Generally. Certainly when it comes to finding static targets. Uh, so what we're going to do now is I'm relatively happy with that. If not... Just hold your target switch down and move your crosshairs uh, into the area that you want. And again, there we go. So what I'm going to do now is expand two. And again, you'd be trying to do this from like 40 miles out just, you know, to give yourself a bit of time. You couldn't obviously active pause uh, in a regular mission. So you can see there are the two or three buildings that I've placed down. So I'm going to try and refine this pip slightly. Uh, let's go for the central one and then expand three. It's going to give us the highest resolution. It's going to take the longest. And I'm happy with that. Uh, that seems to be slap bang center. So in theory now, without anything else, we just follow our guidance computer for the navigation. In terms of azimuth, steering left, right. We hold the pickle down. And when the plane is in the right place at the right time, the computer should automatically release the weapon and hit the building. So let's unpause. Of course, I hit the regular pause. There we go. Active pause off. Let's pick up the speed a little bit. Weather doesn't sound great, does it? And there we go. Just get a little bit more speed. I do have the winds turned on as well. They're around 12 knots. So let's put the uh, auto throttle on. That'll do. And I'm going to follow the the line here, the bomb four line. I'm just going to make sure that my external lights are turned off. There we go. And I'm just going to start a very gentle dive. Just a couple of degrees will do. There's the release cue. So I'm going to hold my pickle button down and bombs away. I was ever so slightly to the right. Let's get the autopilot on and follow the weapon. There are my uh, targets and release the camera. Boom! Smack bang jackpot bullseye. Well, at least for static targets, the F-18's ability to use the radar to designate works great. So let's come back inside the cockpits. Uh, we're now going to look for a moving target. Usually I would say trim the aircraft out, but you know what? <laughs> Seeing as it's my own mission and I can do what I like, you know, it's the advantage of having your channel, right? You can do whatever you like. 
Um, I'm going to... Where are we here? Load. Come on, CCIP. I just want to do this so that it's a little easier on the wings level. Bombs away. There we go. Okay. Right, let's have a look then. So, radar, let's come out of this and we're going to go to map and then GMT for ground moving target. I'm going to up the angle to 90 degrees and let's get some speed on. Let's get the uh, radar elevation on because the weather is pretty horrific. Mode here, we're going to switch this back to automatic. Again, we're using the radar and that is all to target the moving target. I'm not even going to take a look at the uh, TGP. And I'm going to start now a 360 and we'll see if we can find this target. So I'm just going to do a turn and we're looking for a brick on that radar. And this time I'm going to do it without live ports. So I'm going to... We know now the controls I'm going to use. Nose wheel steering to unlock. The target designator to lock. And then the the other controls up, down, left, right to move, you know, this thing around here. And of course, sensor select left and right. Okay, so there's our brick. So I'm going to roll it off here. And I'm going to select the target like that. I'm then going to press sensor select right to get a continuous updating track on the target and I'm going to make my way towards we'll keep the speed on I will try and dive down a little bit when we are closer I'm going to go tell you what I'll just leave the throttles stuck around there we can see where the target is several degrees beneath us let's start our dive now I think five degrees down will suffice it's going to extend the camp down a little bit, but hopefully it will be accurate. You can see there the target is moving slightly from our left to right. So we're going to anticipate his movement just slightly. See the countdown getting very close now. Four, holding the weapon release down. Three, two, one. And pick up. Let's pull up and track the weapon. You see him firing. And release the camera. And there you can see that right there was where those vehicles were at the time we released the weapon. So clearly, laser guided bombs are the way to go there. You'd have to use the TGP. Or you'd have to get a little bit better at guesstimating. Right, well if he's here now, the weapon's going to fall for 5 or 6 seconds. Where is he going to be in 5 or 6 seconds? So yeah, the ground radar system is working perfectly to designate you've seen there how to use it and remember i'll just demonstrate this one more time when it comes to tracking vehicles on the ground because this is where if anybody's going to slip up with this this is where it is so i'm using the unlock button on nose wheel steering to unlock i'm going to swing around just reduce speed a little bit there is the brick so the first thing you're going to want to do vaguely select it then sensor select right a second time and you can see that changes the way the radar works and it's basically locked on to this target if you want to describe it as that on the ground and just to prove the point we're going to fly right to where this lock is here so my heads up display down here is probably going to shoot at us but that doesn't matter it's going to be the end of the video anyway And uh, there are the rounds coming, and you can see we've actually locked onto the guy at the back there. And you can see there that the radar working perfectly. We got hit by a round there. You see the MC light come off. Various errors there, including a fuel leak. Look at that. And with it, that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you found it useful. And until next time, from me here, Fox 3 channel, take care. Bye-bye.